You're traveling through another dimension, a dimension not only of sight and of sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of the imagination. There's a signpost up ahead. Your next stop, the narrow mind. Tuesday night, once again, November 22nd, 2005. My name is Gene Cook. Welcome to The Narrow Mind. Tonight, we're going to be having open phones. We will be taking your calls on any subject that you'd like to talk about. Our phone number is 1-800-466-1873. That is toll-free at 1-800-466-1873. Or if you'd like to uh, save us some money on the toll-free expenses, you can call us on the local on the local line, and you're you're probably more likely to get through as the show progresses at six one nine seven nine three five one eight zero. That is six one nine seven nine three five one eight zero. Both of those numbers can be found on our homepage at unchainedradio.com. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, it's good to be back with you. We had a uh, debate on Sunday night. We're going to be talking a little bit about that in just a moment. Uh, but before we do that, let me just bring your attention to a couple of things. Uh, we've been announcing this for a couple of weeks now. On the upper right-hand column on UnchainRadio.com, you'll see a, uh, a little module that says, Check This Out, or Where Are We? If you click on that, what that is, it's a map of the world. And uh, you just enter your, your name and your zip code, and it'll, it'll show us where you are on the map. It's called a Frapper map. And so far, 48 of you have signed up. And if you sign up during the course of this program, I'll be sure to mention your name and where you're listening from, just so we can get an idea of where our listeners are listening from. But a couple of our most recent signups are Dean Fulcher calling or listening from uh, Marietta, Georgia, Roxy listening from London, England, all the way to uh, London, England, if you can believe that. Uh, John Say in Gainesville, Florida, Greg Brown, Avon, New York, and uh, Emmanuel from Littlefield, Texas, Ricky Babington, Chicago, Illinois, and uh, PP Self, I guess that's some kind of a screen name, PP Self listening in Manassas, Virginia. Uh, take a moment, if you will, and, and, and log into that. Just tell us uh, your name and where you're listening. You can even you know, there's a space there for a shout out. If you want to make a comment or if you want to add a, a photograph, you can do that also. So that's at the upper right hand co uh, column on our on our homepage at unchainedradio.com. I also want to uh, remind you something we announced on Sunday night. If you didn't get a chance to listen, uh, that uh, this Thursday, which is Thanksgiving, of course, we're going to have our first annual remedial theology marathon. And so we will be playing the Remedial Theology programs back-to-back, -back, seven hours worth. And I'm also trying to uh, round up my good friends David Fairchild and Lawrence Bailey to do a live program. So if we do a live program on Thursday morning, uh, we will be taking some calls. Now, if you don't know what Remedial Theology is, uh, then you definitely want to come back and listen because uh, I think you'll be in for a treat. We have people that have been listening to these things all over the planet that are sending me comments and uh, without uh, describing what it is or what it seeks to accomplish, let me just invite you to listen this Thursday. What's going to happen is on Thursday morning, I'm probably going to get out of bed, make some coffee and uh, take a drive down to the studio and start it up. And it'll probably be around eight o'clock, I would imagine, eight o'clock West Coast time, which would be 11, of course, on the East Coast. And so I'd like to invite you back to listen to that. Now, as I mentioned a moment ago, we had a debate on Sunday night between an atheist and a, a pastor, a Christian theist. The Christian theist is none other than another friend of mine, Dustin Seegers. And uh, he's the pastor of Shepherd's Fellowship in Greensboro, North Carolina. He debated Derek Sansone, who is an atheist out of Dallas, Texas. 
And uh, we had a, a debate that took place. The formal aspect of the debate was probably about 40 minutes in length. And then at that time, we kind of had a free-flowing dialogue. And uh, I stayed out of most of it. I stayed out of most of the conversation, just let those two talk. And then about the last um, 20 or 30 minutes when we began to take calls, I was uh, interjecting my own thoughts. And if you'd like to listen to that, you can also download that. That's in the free download section on the homepage. Uh, I would encourage you to listen to that, especially if you're unfamiliar with what is called the transcendental argument for the existence of God. That's the argument that Pastor Dustin Seegers used. And I think you'll see just how powerful it is. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are having open phones tonight, which means this is a chance for you to voice your opinion. Maybe you've got a comment about the debate that took place on Sunday night, or you've got a comment about something else, or you uh, you just don't like me, and maybe you just want to let everybody know that. That's fine, too. You can call up and, <laughs> and let us know. Our phone number, once again, for those of you that just tuned in, is 1-800-466-1873. Our local number is 619-793-5180. Now, the reason why I say maybe you just don't like me is because I happen to know that uh, even though my friends tell me that I am a likable guy, that many of our listeners just don't like me at all. And, and I can understand that. And, and I don't think it's necessarily that they don't like me. I, I think it's more that maybe they don't like my my position, my beliefs, or maybe the uh, the dogmatic form in which I present those beliefs. You know, I'm, I'm convinced that the Christian worldview is not only true, but it's the only defensible worldview that is available to man. And I'm also convinced that those that are found outside of Christ on the day of judgment are going to be judged for their sins accordingly. And so I'm, I'm very passionate about what I do. And sometimes, and I suppose this might have something to do with my upbringing, I, I didn't become a Christian until age 26. I wasn't raised in a Christian home. And so I had a, a you know 26 years to uh, experiment with the world. And so sometimes, I suppose, maybe an aspect of my upbringing, an aspect of my background comes out. I, I, I like to do things kind of on the cutting edge. And the reason for that is I think that um, there's a whole lot of areas that many Christians just don't want to talk about, either because they may be offensive or they may be embarrassing or, you know, they're just gross. You know, people just don't like to talk about certain things. But my philosophy has always been that if, you know, the Bible talks about it, then there's nothing wrong with us talking about it. And so I'm going to talk about a subject here in just a moment that um, you may, if you are a parent, you have children sitting around your computer, uh, you may want to ask them to uh, go into the other room because I, I don't want to, you know, raise questions about the subject that I'm going to be discussing here in a second uh, that you may not uh, want to answer, you may not ha want to have your kids exposed to. But I I'm a firm believer that our worldview, the way that we understand the world in which we live in, has a direct effect, not just a direct effect and influence, but it, it dominates the way that we live our lives in this world. It, it dominates. Whatever we believe about God, about, you know, even if you're an atheist, the non-existence of God, those beliefs are going to dominate the way that you think and the way that you live and the decisions that you make in this world. There's no way of escaping it. And so I'm always kind of a practical person. I want to know what kind of effects do what kind of effects do worldviews have on people's lives? And this is um, I suppose one of those areas that caused many of our atheistic listeners on Sunday night to become outraged at me. And so I want to spend a few minutes talking about this subject uh, before we before we take our calls. Uh, there is a, a website, Fox News, fox21.com. In fact, there is a link to this website if you'd like to look at it. You're in front of your computer and you'd like to pull it up and, and, and look at it and read along with me. And... Uh, the website can be found, the link to the website can be found there on um, the uh, 
the information for this week's programs, where it says This Week on Unchained Radio. You'll see the announcement about tonight's show for The Narrow Mind. You'll find a, a link there. You can copy and paste it. Also, if you received the email announcement, the weekly email announcement today, you'll also know that uh, that link is contained in the email announcement. Now, this, the title of this news report, which was uh, reported on October 25, 2005, is Charges Against Teen Upgraded After Dog He Allegedly Raped Dies. Now, now, why would I talk about something like this on a Christian program? I'm a pastor, uh, so I'm not only a Christian, but I'm, you know, I'm the leader of, of our church, or at least one of the leaders of our church. So, so why would I, as a Christian man, want to talk about a 17-year-old boy that allegedly raped his neighbor's dog, and then the dog died? Well, once again, I want to talk about this because I think that this is exactly a perfect example of what I was talking about just a moment ago when I said that our worldview, the way that we understand the world in which we live in, will have a direct effect on the choices and the decisions that we make in this life. Now, let me read just part of this article here for you. Uh, This is reported from Spartansburg, South Carolina. A Campobello teen is accused of raping one neighbor's dog and another neighbor's two little girls. Now the dog has died and the charges against the teen have been upgraded. After receiving word that the dog died, possibly because of the rape, Fox Carolina called the solicitor's office to see if, if new charges, or if now new charges, would be filed against the teen. An hour later, the solicitor Trey Gowdy called to say that the charges will be upgraded to, quote, the most serious animal cruelty charges they have on the books. The dog's owner, Sylvia Jones, says, At first, when it happened, I couldn't eat or sleep. Every morning, I'm waking up thinking Princess is there, but she's not. Princess's little doghouse is empty now. Sylvia Jones says she died of internal bleeding this past Sunday because of the rape. The vet told me that she had a little blood in her urine and that she was bleeding inside, end quote. Sylvia says that she and her husband would not have believed Corey Williamson raped Princess exactly two weeks to the day she died had they not seen it with their own eyes. And I quote, When I got here, we were laying on the deck. Let me read this again. When I got here, we were laying on the deck looking at him and he had his pants down and he was doing sexual activity with a dog like a man would do with a woman, end quote. The Jones family says Princess wouldn't eat or play anymore after the attack. She, Princess, couldn't even sit down. Her bottom was swollen sore. Sylvia says that she knows Princess was just a dog, but she wants people to know that Princess was also part of her family, a family that now has been forever changed. She looked pitiful. It's sad. There was nothing I could do for her, said um, Sylvia, the the dog's owner. Now, why why is this? Why would I read this once again? Well, I read this because I'm under the conviction that um, that most likely that this young man didn't think he was doing anything wrong. Is is that possible that this seventeen year old young man? woke up and decided that he was going to go next door and have sexual relations with his neighbor's dog. And in his mind, he didn't think he was hurting anybody. I mean, surely he, he, he didn't think that he was hurting another human being. Uh, and most likely, he probably didn't think he was going to hurt the dog. I mean, dogs have sex all the time, right? Humans have sex all the time. It's a natural part of life. This isn't like a chihuahua or anything else like that either. This is a full-size dog. It's a pit bull, in fact, if you take a look at the picture here. So, as we have been dialoguing with our atheist friends, over and over again, they have told us that the existence of God and His Word, the Bible, is not a necessary component to have a moral or ethical code. And repeatedly, one right after another, they have come on this program and they have told us 
that morality is based on actions that bring happiness and actions that don't hurt other people. And so we have a case here of a young man, 17 years old, who obviously wanted to, you know, please himself. He wanted to do things that he thought would bring him happiness. Was there another human being involved? Well, not immediately. I mean, for all we know, he thought that he was just going next door to play with the dog, you know, in his perverse way. How can we, how can we as a society tell him that what he did was wrong? I mean, how can we throw the handcuffs on him? How can we escort him into into jail? How can we press charges against him and convince him that what he did was wrong? What, what did he do that was wrong? I mean, obviously, in hindsight, we read the, the story here and we see that his actions not only affected the dog to the point of death, but they also affected the dog's owner who obviously had a deep love for that animal, uh, which is common among pet owners. But uh, as he is, you know, contemplating his actions and even committing his actions, are any of these things going through his mind? Does he have the intent to hurt his neighbor's, you know, family? Is that his intent? So how do we, as a people, how do we look this young man in the face and tell him that what he did was wrong? I mean, I want to know. I'm trying to understand this. I I, I talked about this uh, at the at the close of the Atheist Hour on Sunday night, and uh, I just read this article and commented, look, you know, it, it seems to me that if we're going to adopt an atheistic worldview, if we're going to adopt a, a, a worldview such as hedonism, which I understand not all atheists are hedonists, but if we're going to adopt that type of mentality, how do we look a boy like this in the eye and tell him that his actions are wrong? Now, another, I mean, most likely this boy is being taught evolution in school. I mean, is that is that fair to say? Is that Am I jumping to conclusion? Most likely, this young man, if he goes to a public school, has been presented with the, uh, the, the, the theory of evolution. And so what did they do? When he went to school and he sat down in his biology 101 or whatever, it's, it's been so long since I've been in high school, I don't even know what class they teach you that stuff in. Uh, and they pulled out this chart and they showed a bunch of polywogs and then they showed, you know, polywogs turning into fish and fish turning into lizards and lizards turning into alligators and alligators turning into monkeys and monkeys turning into gorillas and gorillas turning into people. I mean, is it unreasonable to think for just a moment that maybe in his mind he looked at that chart and said, wow, you know, we're all related. I mean, I came from an animal. I am an animal. I came from a monkey. Monkey has four legs, or monkey has two legs, two arms. <laughs> I have two legs, two arms. Monkey has two eyes, I have two eyes. Monkey has a nose, ears, mouth, hair. So this boy most likely was taught, unless he was raised in a Christian home, which I have no indication uh, to understand that he was, most likely this young man was confronted with the godless theory of atheism, of evolution. The atheistic theory of evolution, I should say that, should, should say it that way. And so, you know, he goes to the cafeteria at lunchtime and stands in line and they throw a hamburger on his plate. Now he looks down at the hamburger. Where did the hamburger come from? The hamburger was made from a cow. That's where hamburgers come from, right? It's beef. 
So not only is he being taught that his you know, relatives, his distant relatives are animals, uh, but now he's, he's eating an animal for lunch. Is there anything wrong with eating is there anything wrong with eating beef? Is there anything wrong with killing a cow to eat it? No. If there's nothing wrong with killing a cow to eat it, what's wrong with having a little sexual activity with the dog next door? I mean, that's not even as bad as taking the dog's life. I mean, we understand that he didn't intend to kill the dog. But when you want to make hamburgers, you kill the, the cow. Do you, you see how confused our youth must be based on what we're teaching them? So it's okay to kill the dog, or rather, I'm sorry, it's okay to kill the cow and to cut them up and eat them, but it's not okay to have uh, some type of sexual activity with another animal, even though you, you tell me that I came from an animal, even though you tell me that I'm nothing more than a, a more developed version of this animal, and you're telling me that evolution is a, is a continuing process whereby new forms of life are constantly being produced. I mean, how do you, if you don't believe in God, well, let's put it this way, how do you, if you don't believe in the Word of God, the Bible, how do you look this kid in the face and tell him what he did was wrong? I want to know. Our phone number is 1-800-466-1873. That's 1-800-466-1873. Mr. Atheist, please tell me, on what basis do you look this young man in the face and tell him that what he did was wrong? Let me tell you why I tell him what he did was wrong and why I can authoritatively say that what he did was wrong. Exodus chapter 22, verse 19. Whoever lies with an animal shall surely be put to death. You want to know how God feels about having sex with an animal? There it is. It's worthy of the death penalty, according to God. It's abomination. You know, as I've thought about this question, the only possible answer that I can come up with is that some atheist out there is going to say, well, you know, it's against the law. Well, who, who made the law? Man made the law? So now man is the standard of morality? So when man says that it's okay to kill Jews, now it's okay to kill Jews? Six million of them? Or when man says it's okay to, to own a black slave, now it's okay to own a black slave because man said it was okay to own a black slave? Is man the standard of morality? No, man is not the standard of morality. Man is made in God's image. And because man is made in God's image, God is the standard of morality. Let's go ahead and take our first call. Let's go to Brother Dustin Seegers calling from Greensboro, North Carolina. Dustin, welcome to The Narrow Mind. Good evening, Gene. How are you doing, friend? I'm doing great. Were you able to hear my, uh, my monologue there? Yes, I was. Okay. I was. Uh, I wanted to read a quote. I've read this online before, and um, this is a quote that is taken from a debate between two evolutionists, and one evolutionist's name is Jaron Lanier, and uh, the other one is the famous Mr. or Dr. Richard Dawkins from Oxford. He's a professor at Oxford. He holds the chair of science there. He's an ardent atheist. And many of our atheist friends, whether they're on the infidelguy.com or whether they're um, listening through here, you'll hear them recommend the book, The Blind Watchmaker, and that's written by Dr. Dawkins. Mm. But yet you'll also hear them recommend a book by Eric Wielenberg, um, Value and Virtue in a Godless Universe. And Wielenberg debated Dr. Murray. Yes, uh, about a month and a half ago, I guess, yeah, maybe a little yeah, longer, I listened and to that. that was on uh, Reggie's website, infidelguy.com, and I listened to that, and it's amazing to me because out of all of the atheists that are out there, I find Dr. Dawkins to be the most consistent. Let me read this quote to you and tell you why. Okay. Jaron Lanier says the following quote, there's a large group of people who simply are uncomfortable with accepting evolution because it leads to what they perceive as a moral vacuum in which their best impulses have no basis in nature, unquote. To which Richard, Richard Dawkins responds, quote, 
All I can say is, that's just tough. We mm. have to face up to the truth, unquote. Wow. That's the reality coming from the chair of science at Oxford University, a school that used to teach the Word of God. Mm. Well, that's and what that, happens. That's when what you... happens. This guy's being consistent with his presuppositions. He's right. He's absolutely right. If there's no God, there's no hope. You can do whatever you want. If you want to have sex with a dog, have sex with a dog. If that makes you feel good, do it. And when these people and the atheists who still have a conscience and it hasn't been burned out yet say, well, that is just horrendous. That is absolutely nuts that someone would stoop so low to do that. When they do that, Mm -hmm. they're exposing, as I said in my debate Sunday night, they're exposing a tremendous metaphysical tension in their worldview. That's right. Not only because that. They're, they're, they're saying on one hand that go ahead and do whatever it takes to make yourself happy. But yet on the other hand, they're saying, except for things like that. Well, be consistent. Yeah, and be honest. Which be is honest. A, which is another Christian virtue. Uh, what, what, you know what? If you saw some of the email that I got after Sunday night, uh, you would be amazed if you look at some of, and, and this is public stuff. So if our listeners want to look at this, they're free to, sure. they can go into the forum there under the atheism and they can look at some of the, uh, the posts that were made in relationship to the debate that took place on Sunday night, namely my comments at the end where I talked about this young man who, who, uh, you know, committed this, this, this evil deed. And, uh, the atheists were just furious. They couldn't, they thought that, I was saying that they somehow would endorse this man's behavior. Now, I'm not saying that at all. No. But... You're just showing that if evolutionary theory is true and there is no God, that would be the consistent outflow or the consistent logical end of holding to their presuppositions. That's right. And how can they hold that young man accountable for something that he's been, he's been taught and indoctrinated with in school, he may have just put all the all the cubes together, put all the cards together and said, hey, no matter how I feel or how I think maybe this is wrong, if there's no God, why not have sex with the dog if I want to have sex with That's the dog? Right. Why not do like Jeffrey Dahmer said? And I realized Dr. Price, when he came on, he said that when they interviewed Dahmer, Dahmer realized that what he was doing uh, was wrong. He, he, he believed in his conscience that it was wrong. The problem is Dahmer was convinced otherwise to go against his conscience because he said, look, if we all came from just slime, just like the front of the website says when Stone Phillips interviewed him, Mm -hmm. if we all came from slime and that everything came about through the process of time, chance, and natural processes from the goo to the zoo to you, then why can't I kill kids, cut their heads off, and bore holes in their heads and have sex with them? Well, it's it's a valid question. If there's no God, we can do whatever we want to do. And Whoever's a, got the most power from a human standpoint, that's the person that rules. And it's just a process, a nasty process of natural selection with no God. That, that, you know, and, I, and I think the reason why people, get, or people got so agitated, or some of our listeners got agitated, is because once again, just as Romans chapter 1 says, that men suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Right. Although they know God, they fail to recognize him as God. Yeah, and, so and they it, become futile in their speculations, and their foolish heart becomes dark. That's right. But when these spotlights, if, if I can use that uh, analogy, when these spotlights <clears throat> begin to shine upon their inconsistencies and demonstrate that they do have a conscience and they do intuitively know that having sex with your neighbor's dog is wrong, they demonstrate once again the truthfulness of the Christian worldview. Right. And they can't escape it, and that's why they get upset. And you know what, Dustin? Our phone lines are unusually quiet tonight. I don't know why. No, I'd like to hear from them. (laughs) <laughs> because I, w- I want to know what they have to say about this. How do they how do they defend Dr. Dawkins? They're going to say, well, I don't want to defend Dr. Dawkins. He's his own man. He can make his own statements. I'm telling you, as a Christian pastor to an atheist, I'm not being mean, but I'm telling you, be consistent with your worldview. Yeah. You know what? If you're going to be consistent, you're going to have to say, 
that your conscience, if it makes you feel bad to do some of the things that we've mentioned, how do you know from your atheistic worldview that your conscience isn't just a function or a vestige of evolution that needs to be um, weeded out through natural selection? Right. I mean, how do we know that this guy is not going to make – I mean, just to be facetious here for a second, I mean, the kid's having sex with a pit bull. Those are the strongest dogs or one of the strongest breeds. I mean, maybe he's thinking in his mind that he's going to create some superhuman. No telling what the guy's thinking. No telling what the guy's thinking. You know, you're listening to this, and you're an atheist out there. You've got uh, Dr. Dawkins saying, well, you know what? We just need to fess up. What the kid did, it's not wrong. Yeah, just face up to the truth. That's what Face Dawkins up to said. the truth. The chair of science at Oxford University. This is the future of atheism. Yes. This is the future. Mark my words, 10, 15, 20 years from now, uh, we won't be talking about uh, young girls wearing their pants too low. We will be talking about boys and girls having sexual relationships with animals. That's right. It's already on the Internet. Yep. It's, they're selling it on the Internet. Yep. You know, and, uh, you know, if, okay, you, you, you had a debate with Derek Sansone. Yes. Now, I like Derek as a person. Absolutely. I can't stand his worldview. Yeah. I think but it, I like the guy. I mean, I love the guy. Yeah. I just I like he's the kind of guy you'd want to go out and get pizza with, you know. Yeah, yeah. and I, I look forward to the day that he flies down to San Diego and I get the opportunity to baptize him. Right. So <laughs> as, if, <laughs> as if that's going to happen, right? Yeah. Uh, but you never know. Uh, well, he's still hey, if he's still alive. We both know that he's still alive. Right. As Van Til says, he's not outside of God's. He's never outside of God's reach. That's right. But if he's still breathing, we'll talk to him. Amen. So. Now, he he espoused a view uh, of hedonism, where if you go back and listen to the debate, right, he said that um, according to his worldview, his goal is to achieve pleasure in this life. Yeah. And uh, when you asked him about somebody achieving pleasure on somebody else at their own expense, you know, at that, at that victim's expense, right, he said, well, maybe it's my pleasure to to stop that type of action. Uh, but, you know, that's... I, I don't think that that solves the problem. H how... Yeah, that, that doesn't get rid of the problem. That just puts a rug over it. No, because <laughs> let, let's let's take our the, the story that we have at hand here. Okay, so if, if I ask Derek, okay, Derek, so was it wrong for this young man to pursue pleasure with Princess? W what is he going to say? I if he says... Yes, it's wrong because it hurt the dog. Well, is Derek a vegetarian? A my, are atheist friends out there listening? Are you guys vegetarians? Is it okay to kill animals to eat them? Well, that's a, that's a source of pleasure. In fact, some people realize that eating is such a source of pleasure that they call it gluttony. Yeah. So it, it just doesn't make sense to me. Right. Now, although it doesn't make sense to me, I also realize because I because I read God's Word, that uh, this is the way God tells us things are going to be. Yep. That men are darkened in their understanding, that men are at enmity with God, that men hate God's law, and they will seek to do whatever they can to suppress the truth and unrighteousness. And in doing so, sometimes uh, the truth kind of rises to the surface and exposes their inconsistencies. I think this is one of those examples. Yeah. Well, you know, we don't enjoy, I, I certainly don't enjoy um, reading quotes and things like that, but ultimately you have to do this because to read these quotes, what we're doing is we're showing that this is the consistent logical result of atheism as taken to its end. Right. You know, we're doing what the Bible talks about in Proverbs chapter 26, verse 4, where it says, answer a fool according to his folly. And then the next one says, do not answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own eyes. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing, we're taking a twofold approach, and we're saying, look, we're going to step into your worldview for just a second for the sake of argument, and then we're going to carry it to its logical extent. And that's what Richard, Richard Dawkins has done. That's what Peter Singer has done with the unborn says that you can kill kids up to several uh, months after they're born 
and that that needs to be legalized. Mm -hmm. Now, I realize some atheists are going to be outraged at hearing me say that. And, hey, I understand that. I'm glad that you still show the image of God within you Mm -hmm. to be outraged. But look, remember, you are stealing from the Christian worldview by assuming that that's immoral. Because if all we are is sound and fury signifying nothing, there's no difference in me crushing a baby's head and crushing a Coke can. It's just molecules rearranged differently. Or swatting a fly. Yep. You know, it's we, just, it just, just disorganizing matter. We, we attempted to uh, kill a mosquito here before the, the program began, and uh, he's still up on the ceiling. He, esca- he, he evaded us. Um, and, you know, what? what's the difference? I mean, the kid, the kid killed the dog. You know, what's up with that? The kid killed the dog. He didn't mean to kill the dog. When I try to kill the mosquito, I'm intentionally trying to kill the mosquito. Well, some would say, well, you know, that's because the, the mosquito wants to feed off of you. Well, you got to feed the dog, too. That's coming out of your pocketbook. Right. If you don't believe that, talk to anybody that's got a dog. Uh, Dustin, we've got, uh, we're going to take some other calls. Okay. And uh looks like our, our lighting is is working by itself now. That's kind of weird. Our lights are blinking on and off here in the studio. I don't know if you can hear that popping sound coming through. Yeah. The, uh, that's kind of huh. weird. Okay. Well, we have a new uh, screener tonight. I don't know if you if you noticed that, Dustin. Yeah, Doug. Time. Yeah, Doug, he's been a member of our church. In fact, he was, a, he was at the very first service over nine and a half years ago. Oh, that's great. In fact, oh, uh, praise the Lord. other than my parents, I think he's the only one that's stuck around this long. <laughs> 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 that says a lot for him. Huh? Well, look, brother, you get to those other calls, and okay. uh, God bless you, and thank you for doing the show. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. God bless. All right. Once again, you are listening to The Narrow Mind. My name is Gene Cook. We're talking about morality and the lack of it when you reject the Christian worldview. Our phone number is 1-800-466-1873. We do have a couple of open lines. Still got plenty of time left in the show. 1-800-466-1873. Our local phone number is 619-793-5180. That's 793-5180 in the 619 area code. Let's go to our next caller. Marty, welcome to The Narrow Mind. Hey, brother, how are you tonight? Good, good. Good to talk to you again. Nice to talk to you, too. I've uh, naturally been uh, loyally listening to you. Uh, sorry to hear that you was not feeling well about a week ago. Yeah, I, I feel great now, though, so I appreciate all those that prayed for me. And well, uh, uh, I consider it an honor to be able to pray for people. I appreciate that. Uh, I've been listening to your discussion briefly tonight, uh, and uh, uh, when I heard you read the article, actually, after Dustin and Derek's um, debate, I reflected on it for as long as I could without getting sick to my stomach in regards to the acts that were going on. But you make a valid argument, you know, if an atheist that stands true to his own worldview cannot condemn this young man for what he's done uh, because it goes directly against what they believe in, in most cases. And uh, I also see it just being a repeat of what has sickened God throughout the ages, the immorality of man in general, Mm -hmm. uh, from the day of when he brought the children of Israel out of bondage and their turning to idols and so forth and the destruction of the world because of the immorality going on, you know, through the flood. And it's really just, I mean, a repetitive cycle that we, that we as men, I would say, the man, the human race don't, doesn't get. Mm-hmm. I agree. And I, I'm sorry, go ahead. I agree. Uh, when man... When man denies the God who made him, when man becomes the standard of morality, then man's standard of morality will be dictated by his own pleasures and desires. Yes. And so that uh, right and wrong will be a matter of one's personal preferences based on, you know, the way that they're wired up. And if they're a sinner, which the Bible says they are, 
Yeah. And they are going to call those things that God calls good, they're going to call them evil, and they're going to call those things that God calls evil good. Yes, I agree, uh, Pastor Gene. And uh, I know with my call to when Pastor Dustin was uh, hosting for you last week, uh, I was discussing the uh, what is affectionately known as Pascal's Wager with him in mm-hmm. my question to any atheist. And even after that, I know uh, I had talked with Pastor Dustin. He said that the phone lines kind of went crazy after our discussion. Yeah. Uh, and I hear a lot of people say, it's, you know, as far as atheists say, well, that's just Pascal's wager. But I've yet to hear anybody give me an answer still. Well, yes, we know it's Pascal's wager. But I can answer that back to them by saying, so what are your will? What? Are you willing to wager that? Mm -hmm. I mean, just quoting that it's Pascal's wager is not an answer. Yeah, I understand. I still say, what if? Are you willing to take and play that wager with your life? And, uh, you know, by God's sovereign grace and his will, are we saved? Mm -hmm. And, uh, we are not to question God in that. But I, uh, I hear these professing atheists that say they were once Christians. Well, based on their worldview, how can they even know they were once Christians? That's a great question. Uh, they can't. Because if you reject God, yeah. you really can't know anything for certain. Well, there again, it contradicts their worldview. Mm-hmm. To say, I was a Christian, then I found the truth. Well, really, what is the truth? Mm -hmm. And how do you know it's the truth? Because my truth is God. So I have something to build on when I say I found the truth. I didn't find the truth. The truth found me. Amen. And if, because let's face it, I was a drug addict, a hater of God, a lying, adulterous, thieving, murderous person. Mm. And God chose to show mercy to me. I wasn't looking for him. He found me. So I have to seriously doubt any person that says I was once saved, but then I got the truth, and now I'm an atheist. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'd like to know I, by what uh, by what standard, by what measuring stick did they did they determined that they had finally arrived at something called the truth. Yeah, and, you know, I, I read the forms posted on, on the website uh, quite a bit. I don't I don't get in there and really function in them as some do uh, because I, I, I read them. I mean, really, it's more of a learning thing, just seeing the questions and stuff that are posed and actually some of the absurdities. Mm-hmm. Uh, I see some of the things that are being argued on there. And I'm like, you know what? Some people really just don't have much to do, apparently. <laughs> you uh, know what? I don't get involved in them either. I don't know if you've noticed that. Yeah, I have noticed that. I've seen you. I think I've seen responses from from you maybe once or twice. Yeah, I. But I, I'm saying I'm not... one. I'm busy about the work of the Lord, mm-hmm. and that's not being accomplished necessarily by me. Now I know some people. You know, I, I appreciate. Some of the men that's in there answering it, and not to belittle anything they do right. by any means. No, we've got. Some, I appreciate them. Yeah, we've got some astute, uh, astute listeners that uh, definitely are contributing some some great things in that forum. Oh, most definitely. But you know, on on average, what I see is all of the arguments being rendered to absurdity based on the way the conversations are being led and. You know, a lot of antagonizing going on by others. Yeah, it's kind of a cesspool. It's, um, yeah, it's kind of like, well, I know you are, but what am I kind of mentality. Yeah, I, I, I you know, I thought about taking that off, uh, but somebody talked me out of it. I thought about well, shutting I, the whole thing down, I, but... Uh, yeah, you know, you know I, I would love to see some more constructive arguments instead of the same old thing in there. Uh, I mean, really, the atheist argument, you know... Uh, well, Link Zelda, I can use him as one example. It's That's definitely some of the most childish replies I've ever read for an atheist. 
I want. I hope, you know I what? I'm listening. a Steelers fan. I've been one for 30 years. I opted to listen to you that night and not watch the Steelers game. So there is a true Steelers fan that chooses God over the Steelers. Praise God, brother. Hey, you know what? Your My eternal is salvation be great. is much more That's important right. than them winning a football game. Yeah, that was kind of funny, wasn't it? That the guy didn't even. Uh, well, want... it was just. It was just really showing just how the lack of of respect that he not only had for the show that night, but also for apparently, probably his fellow man in general. Mm. Yeah, he doesn't uh, care. It's just it's it's trivial stuff. Turn the TV down, okay? Uh, if you want to have a you know a formal conversation with somebody. Show that person respect that you would like to receive. I agree. But, you know, these are just petty things. I agree. And uh, we're arguing, I mean, one, let's face it, if they're even arguing about there's no God, they've already presupposed there's a God. And I wonder, do they get that? No, they don't. They don't get that. Yeah, I don't I don't see how they can't. You know no, what I'm saying? They don't. Because they have to presuppose God to argue against him. They don't get it. They and they, they spend more time in the Bible, unfortunately, than most Christians in this day and time. Mm-hmm. That's true. And that's sad. That's true. Hey, brother, so, i got to move on to some other calls. Very good. Marty, you have a, a blessed evening, and God bless your ministry. You too. Thank you for calling. All right. Uh, we have uh, a couple of lines still open. Our number is 1-800-466-1873. That is toll-free, 800-466-1873. And it even works in Canada. Let's go to our next caller, March, calling from Canada. March, welcome to the show. Hi, Gene. I want to uh, agree with your last caller. Actually, uh, I read the Bible almost every day, and I'm an atheist. So uh, I think that's true. Why would you do that? Oh, it's it's interesting. I mean, for the same reason I, part, I call in your show, I, I just find it intellectually interesting. Okay. Do you, but do you I wanted to yeah, quibble about a little thing. You know, you mentioned, you know, just to say, you were talking about the top of the show, about atheists either liking you or disliking you. I, I think you're pretty sincere in, in, in what you say, and I, I can kind of understand you not understanding, you know, how an atheist has a basis for morality. Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, that that's kind of un, that position is kind of understandable. Like how how does an atheist account for morality? But. Um, I just want to point out one thing that I hear all the time. It seems that often people compare Christianity to atheism, and I think that's slightly inappropriate. I think a, a more fair comparison would be theism to atheism. So, like, I could ask the same question, how does a theist, you know, form a basis for morality? Well, neither atheism nor theism actually proposes morality. Instead, with, with theism, you have to put a layer on top, which is Christianity, and then you have the Bible and, and certain moral precepts. But if you say an atheist doesn't have a basis for morality, I actually agree with you, because an atheist, atheism just says it's just a lack of God. If you want morality, then you have to put a layer on top of that. Well, that's why we don't, uh, we don't think that theism is uh, a defendable worldview in and of itself. We, well, well, I don't call myself a theist, uh, and, I, and I reject. Uh, I would reject the title of a theist. Well, I am a, well, I'm a triune theist or a Christian theist. Right, right. You're, you're a Christian theist, but I'm saying, wouldn't you agree? Christianity is, is a layer. No, of, no, on I wouldn't. Of... See, this is where this is where presuppositional apologetics differs from a, a regular apologetic, where a, a worldview is built brick by brick. You start out with a brick of theism, and then you you move to the brick of uh, Christian theism. And so uh, kind of a, a worldview is constructed one piece at a time. We take the Christian worldview as a whole, and we say that Christian, the- Christian theism is the only theism. Uh, and therefore, to say that theism can be theism without being Christian theism would be erroneous. Do you see the difference there? Uh, <laughs> I, I'm trying to, but obviously there are other theists, like uh, you know Hindus or, or deists. Yeah, I mean, these are, these and I would I would stand uh, I would stand right next to you, March, and argue that they are they are dead wrong, and so I, I'll argue against every worldview that opposes Christian theism because Christian theism is the only defendable worldview that is available to man, and okay. so I would join you in arguing against the uh, 
the 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 errors of Hinduism or Buddhism or uh, Islam or Mormonism or any of those isms that uh, are, are contrary to Christian theism. Right. Okay. But and the point I'm trying to make is that you know a, a, a theistic system like like Hinduism or, or anything else actually within itself proposes some precepts, right? But but in atheism you don't have that. You have to you have to add something. So mm-hmm. when you say atheists don't can, can account for morality, well that's true. But it's it's kind of you, you missing the point. Don't, don't you think? Well, I would agree that Hindus can't account for morality, and Buddhists can't well, okay, account but, for morality. Well, okay, okay, yes, yes, I understand from your Christian presupposition, but mm-hmm. they have precepts, right? They yeah, but they're, man, they're man-made. That's the difference. Okay, f- that, that's fine. That, I'm not. I'm trying to discount Hinduism or anything. Okay. I'm just trying to draw a, a parallel. Well, I mm-hmm. agree with you. Okay, good. Yeah. I'm, okay. It, it would. It would kind of, you know. I, I would be pleased if you would, instead of comparing Christianity directly to atheism, comparing, like, I think you should get on your show someone who's in, more familiar with, with ethics and actually be able to address ethical theories that are, are godless. You know? Well, we've put out the invitation. In fact, uh, if you look at our, our website... We, uh, we advertise that if you're an atheist out there that would like to come on the Atheist Hour and uh, demonstrate that your worldview is cohesive and it can be defended, then we'd like you to come on and talk about it. So we are, yeah, we are uh, you know, opening, I mean, we have an open invitation to all those that would, you know, like to come on and discuss these things. And, and by the way, Hinduism is not theistic, it's polytheistic. It believes in, in uh, many gods. Right. Try try to get uh, Doug Kruger back on because I'm I'm sure that he'll be able to address some atheistic ethical right. theories with you. Okay, thanks for your call, March. Thank you. Bye. All right, and it looks like we've got a second caller from. It looks like we've got a second caller from uh, Canada. His name is Sai. Sai, welcome Hi. to the Narrow Mind. Hi, Pastor Gene. It's uh, nice to uh, finally talk to you. I've been reading up a lot of your uh, site, and uh, I really enjoy it. Good. Um, yeah, I, I just um, discovered the presuppositional um, apologetic recently, and I absolutely love it. I think it's fantastic. Good. It's nice to have uh, the certainty of that apologetic uh, compared to the evidential apologetics, which I was engaged in for uh, most of my life, so I really enjoy it. But my question for you is, with, with these um, forums on your site and with these protracted debates that you hold with atheists, aren't we granting them too much with the presuppositional method? Because... Like the presuppositional method says that they could not even use language because of in, induction and stuff like that. They couldn't use language. They they couldn't think without the Christian God's existence. And I'm just wondering, with the presuppositional method, don't we grant them too much by engaging in protracted debates? Why can't we just ask? How can you even use language? Well, that should be the uh, that should be one of the the focal points. Absolutely. It, did you did you catch our debate that we hosted on Sunday night? I did not. No. Okay. I, I think that you will be impressed, based on uh, what you've said so far, with with uh, Pastor Dustin Seeger's opening statement. He had a 15-minute I, I really enjoyed listening to him. I actually just emailed him, and uh, I hope to have contact with him, too, because I thought he, he speaks very clearly, and I enjoy listening to, listening to him as well. Yeah, he, he basically espoused exactly what you're saying. Mm-hmm. He, he basically said, and which is he was being faithful to the presuppositional position, that all of right. life— all of life presupposes the existence of God, right. including argumentation, morality, language, logic, all of these different fields, the uniformity of nature. And he did a great job of laying out systematically his position in his opening statement. So it's right. on the website for free download. I'd encourage you to listen oh, to it. But you're absolutely right, uh, Sai. We need to cut to the chase, and we need to you know, chop the philosophical legs off from underneath them and, and show them. That look, you, we are giving you too much when we allow you to to accuse us of a contradiction or allow you to accuse our God of being immoral. Now, I don't know how much time you spent listening to, uh, to me or to my program, but I try to do exactly what you've just pointed right. out. I I try to cut straight to the chase, and right. uh, and and even in this this uh, this show that we've had tonight, I've tried to demonstrate. That, look, there is no basis for morality 
if right. you reject the Christian God. Right. So I, uh, I'm definitely going to go uh, check out that debate because um, I haven't really heard atheists being challenged on even their use of language, for instance. How do they know that the words they're using are mean the things that they did five seconds ago? Well, they don't. See, that's the thing. If you listen to the debate, you'll find that Derek mm-hmm. Sansone says that he cannot know, as an atheist, he cannot know anything about the future for certain. Right. He even said that tomorrow it is quite possible that H2O, water, will kill you. Right. So but, what, but the thing is, but they don't live that way because he no, will go to his don't. tap tomorrow, take water, and drink it. That's right. And, and, it's, and, and it's very contradictory the way they live. And it, it's just that I find that with a lot of debates that I see online and stuff like that, that we give them too much. I, I realize it's a very short radio show if we just said, mm-hmm. well, how can you even talk? Mm-hmm. I realize that, but I'm, I'm just wondering where the balance is. But like I said, I really enjoy the apologetic. I just think it's fantastic. I've, I've been voraciously downloading the lectures by Dr. Greg Bonson, and I just think they're fantastic. Yeah, he was a genius, I tell you. He was oh, absolutely, truly yeah. gifted. He was truly gifted. I, I, there, you know, I don't agree with everything that Doctor Bonson taught, but when it came oh, to, I realize that. <laughs> yeah, when it came, I do. <laughs> are you in the OPC? No, actually, see, like this apologetic is very new for me. So I've, I've just, uh, I've been attending an OPC church just the last couple of weeks, actually, in, the, in some afternoon services, and um, I'm really enjoying it. Well, right, I, right now, actually, I'm, I'm looking into uh, young Earth creationism, and the funny thing is, six months ago, anybody who said that I would have called them a lunatic, mm. and I would consider myself in the lunatic camp now. <laughs> right, because... Because uh, well, it's biblical. It's biblical. I mean, well, first of all, I think what happens there is we begin to, as Greg Bonson would say, we use science as a hermeneutic, or we we use natural revelation as a hermeneutic to try to uh, understand the Bible, when in fact the Bible speaks on its own authority. Right. People try to bring our knowledge into the Bible rather than going the other way around. Exactly. And for anybody who's listening out there, the best argument I've ever heard for young earth was that God created Adam as a man. Yeah. Now, we don't know how old, let's say mid-20s or so. Now, if there was a doctor who would examine Adam right on the spot a second after creation, he would say this man is 23 years old or 24 years old or whatever. That's right. And he would have that apparent age because he was created with that age. That's right. And I see no problem with that being the same with our Earth. No, and I've used that uh, argument all along. Uh, mm-hmm. Just for the sake of our listeners, let's let's briefly explain what the difference is between evidential apologetics and presuppositional apologetics. When we're talking about evidential apologetics, we're talking about the most popular form of apologetics that's used by Christians, and that is kind of what I alluded to earlier when I was talking to March, where the Christian worldview is kind of uh, uh, pieced together like a, a brick wall, if you can imagine a worldview being a brick wall. So you begin with the idea that there is a God. You start with theism. And then maybe you add on to that that uh, this God is the creator. So that's another brick in the wall. And then you add on to that uh, Jesus Christ, who is the Messiah. And then you add on to the wall of Trinitarianism. And so you begin to develop your Christian worldview one piece at a time. Kind of like, well, it's inductive reasoning is what it is. It's taking various parts and assembling them together to reach a conclusion. Um, presuppositionalism is different than that. Presuppositionalism starts with God and his word. That is our presupposition. So that we, we, we can't argue just for theism. We have to argue for Christian theism. We can't argue for ethical systems, we have to argue for Christian ethical systems that are found in God's Word. So God's Word becomes the authority. We don't prove God because, as you already mentioned, God is a, the Christian God is a precondition for even the question of proof, things such as proofs, things such as truth, things such as concepts, as, as, as we learned in our debate on Sunday night. So all these things presuppose the existence of God whether or not man is willing to admit that, or whether or not man realizes that. Sai, I want to thank you so much for calling in. Keep listening, and uh, uh, let me just give you a word of advice, <laughs> if I can. Uh, do some do some careful study uh, on the different uh, eschatologies before you swallow one wholeheartedly, namely uh, the distinctions between postmillennialism and uh, amillennialism. I found Dr. Bonson to be very compelling in his argument for postmillennialism, but upon further study, I uh, came to the conclusion that I just had to disagree with him. 
And so I want to uh, to, to, to caution you there. So, But uh, I'm sure you, you sound like you've got a good head on your shoulders. You don't need to be told that. But um, it's important for us, I think, to uh, examine the individual parts of these systematic theologies uh, rather than swallowing them wholeheartedly, uh, which, which was what I did as a new Christian. I swallowed dispensationalism and Arminianism as a package just because I thought that that's all there was. So... Um, this is also something that I would suggest to all of our listeners who are Christians and concerned about arriving at the truth. Well, I want to uh, thank you once again, Cy, for calling in. I look forward to talking to you in the future. And uh, that brings us to the end of our program. And I just want to tell you that I firmly believe, I firmly believe that if you reject Christianity, And if you want to be consistent in your argumentation, then you are going to arrive at the same conclusions that Dr. Dawkins has in the quotes that were presented by Dustin Seegers. And that is that there really is nothing wrong with sneaking away in the middle of the night to have sex with your neighbor's dog. It's just something that brings man happiness. The problem with that is that you know in your heart of hearts that that behavior is despicable. And the reason why you know that is because you have been made in the image of God and God has so impressed upon you His moral image that even though it's fallen, even though it's been marred by the fall, you still carry it everywhere you go and you live accordingly. The time has come. You Today is the day. If what I'm saying is right, My atheist friend, you have a terrible problem on your hands because you will die and you will be held accountable to your Creator. This has been The Narrow Mind. My name is Gene Cook, and I want to thank you for listening.